Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Well, welcome back to my channel, Inside to Him. take the little bag that I got at Michael's. I mean, I don't even really know what people are supposed to use this for. Put gifts in? Is it like a gift bag? I don't know. But for four bucks, I thought it would make a really cute um, pillow or at least part of a pillow. So you need to cut away the front from the back the front that has all the Christmassy stuff is going to be one pillow, one side of the pillow, and the plain side we are going to embellish for the other side of the pillow. So just cut away all the stitching that they have holding this bag together. Try and cut close to the stitching so that you can preserve as much of this fabric as possible. All right, now we've got that and I'm going to take it over to the iron and press out this crease so that we can get a good even uh, measurement. Okay, I pressed it out pretty good, I think. All right, next up, we're going to take our really large uh, ruler and again, just kind of preserving as much of this fabric as possible. And I'm using this line here as sort of my guide to make it straight since I don't technically have a straight edge. And then take your rotary cutter and cut this away. Perfect. And now from here, you can use that cut edge as your straight grain, if you wanna call it that. If you want this to be like centered, see how the red is not totally centered? You could definitely cut that away. Um, I think I'm gonna leave it. The whole thing's kind of a little bit wonky, so I think it just kind of adds to the homemade sort of nature of it. Okay, so once we've got these cut away, we need to have a rough measurement of them. This one looks to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine inches by nine by 14 and a half. And so when we go to embellish this side, we will know um, what to, uh, what size to cut out our embellishment. Okay, from here, I'm going to cut little snips to mark our halfway points. And this is just gonna help us center it on the fabric. One, two, three, four and a half. Okay, great. Now we're gonna get our fabric. We're gonna start with the non-Christmassy side. I have this great flannel from Joanne. And we are gonna cut a square, the size, the exact size of our pillow but first we have to kind of prep this fabric it is going to want to shrink once steam is applied to it so to prevent that from happening and then making your pillow too small we're going to do this ahead of time all right so here's my pillow i got this insert from goodwill so goodwill sells pillows for like five dollars the outsides are hideous but the insides are sometimes down feathers goose feathers um, and they can be really, really nice and very expensive. So I always just buy them, then chunk the outsides and keep the inserts. Um, normally on this tag, it'll tell you how large, like what size the pillow is. This one isn't. This tag does not tell me. So let's just do a quick measurement from seam to seam. Looks like we're gonna have a 21 inch square pillowcase. So when making a 21 inch pillowcase, I like to cut uh, the pillowcase exactly 21 inches. That way, whenever you have your half inch seam allowances all the way around, it makes for a nice snug pillow. Um, so I'm gonna cut this uh, larger than 21 by 21 at the moment. All right, let me go prep this. All right, I'm back. 
Now we need to make a 21 inch square. So I'm gonna fold this in half both ways like so. Just trying to make quicker work of this. All right, so here we've got this. And so now since I have it in quarters, I'm just gonna cut away um, 11 inches instead of having to kind of mangle um, that whole big swath of fabric. trouble in the end. You can either um, serge your edges together at the end. I'm just going to pink them really quickly. It is going to make them a little bit smaller, but again, I think the tighter the pillow, the more nice and expensive it looks anyways. And if you're wondering, this is my Kai 5045 rotary cutter with the pinking blade. It's awesome, as you can tell, just whipping through these four layers of flannel like so. All right, perfect. That'll just prevent some of that from fraying. All right, and now we can go ahead and snip our centers, one there and one there. All right, now let's open this up. All right, and what you should have now is a nice big square um, with all your centers cut, snipped, like so. And then you take your fabric and taking the plain side, not the one with the Christmas decorations on it, but taking the plain side and kind of centering it up. So we've got one center line here and another there. So that goes right about here. And then this one lines up right about here. And then this center mark needs to be moved up some, like so. And again, kind of just eyeballing it. I mean, you can get out a ruler if you wanted. And then if you're a quilter and you're wondering why is she just ap appliquing this, you could obviously cut strips like this and then like this and piece them together like you would a quilt. Um, but since I have the fabric, this is just kind of easier and faster. Um, I also think that uh, the quilted look is definitely like a look, like it's a country type of vibe, and that's not really what I'm going for in my Christmas decorations. I want it to be a little bit more modern, a little more clean, so I like it this way. All right, so I'm gonna pin all the way around, take it over to my sewing machine, uh, do a zigzag stitch all the way around, and for my zigzag stitch, I'm getting the stitch length and width really big. Um, I think that that adds like a really cute element to what we've got going on here. So I'm gonna go do that and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Um, I'm also gonna do the other side, the one that's gonna have the Christmas decoration. I'm doing it the exact same way that I've done this one. So um, you're not really missing much. So when I come back, I'm gonna have two sides of a pillow. Um, we've got the Christmas side and we've got the fall side. So I've got my Cricut design, Hello Sweater Weather, super cute. Uh, both of the designs that I used for the fall side of my pillows were just images that were in design space. I didn't actually make these myself. Um, somebody else did and they're really cute. So made it super easy to just go in design space and uh use them i didn't have to do any design work at all so if you're one of those people that's like i'm not great at graphic design that's okay they have a lot of really cute images in there that you can use just as they are so let me get all of this weeded and pressed onto the fabric i'm using my cricut heat press 
so it'll make really quick work of it. Cricut.com, there's like a heat setting guide where you can put in the material that you're using, the material that you are adhering it to, and it'll tell you um, how long and at what temperature to do on your heat press. And then it'll also tell you what kind of removal process we have for the, um, for the like top layer. This one happens to have a warm removal so you have to do it when it's not piping hot but when it's still warm some of the other vinyls have a like completely cool so you have to wait until it's cooled off completely but kind of once you get this going you should be able to remove it gently but easily And I will press it uh, for a few seconds from the back side just to make sure it's nice and set in. Okay, ta-da, all done, super cute, I'm obsessed. While this cools, because this metallic is a little hot, I'm gonna go ahead and start installing the zipper. So I'm going to do a zipper closure on our pillow on the bottom. And I had a zipper right here. It doesn't quite run the length of the pillow, but that's okay. It doesn't have to. So long as you can fit your pillow form into it, I think that you'll be fine. This is not even an invisible zipper. This is just your regular old Joe Schmo zipper. And so I need to remember how to install a regular Joe Schmo zipper. <laughs> I'm used to doing invisible ones, obviously. Okay, so this needs to go like this. So we've got it like that. Okay, good. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. Okay, let's get this on there. And then I'll pin it, uh, take it to the sewing machine and attach this side and then attach the other side. And I'll really just have like one flat piece at that point. Just make sure that you're attaching your zippers to the right side and to the bottom of both of the, of the squares. So the other one will go on like this. That way when you're, I mean, it really only matters when you go to flip your pillow you just simply have to do a rotation, not a rotation and a flip. You know what I mean? Okay, let's get the zipper in. All right, so this is what you've got after you've installed your zipper. You should have something that looks like this. I am going to go to the iron and just kind of press this open so that it's nice and neat. And then we are going to fold these right sides together and we are going to sew all the way around all three of these edges. Now, the only thing you have to remember, the only thing, pay attention, is you have to unzip your zipper halfway. If you don't do that, then you can't get your hands in. If you've closed up your whole square, you can't get your hands in to pull the pillow right sides together. So before you sew around all the edges, unzip your zipper halfway. If you do that, this is a very easy, no fail project. If you don't do that, you're gonna be pulling out your seam ripper and it's gonna be really annoying. just like you would bag making or anything else, just to make sure those corners turn nice and pretty and make a nice little point, like so. And then you just, the hole that you left when you undid your zipper halfway, don't come at me if you forgot to do that. Um, you just turn it right side out and take your point turner 
and get into those corners and make them nice and pretty. Then we just uh, put in our pillowcase, really. Um, so on my other one, you saw that I added pom-poms. If you wanted to add any trim uh, to the seams along the outside, you would have done that before you sewed your pillowcase closed, obviously. Oh my God, that is so cute. Um, so if you wanted to put in like a ruffle around the edge or flat um, piping or regular piping, whatever you wanted to do, you would, needed, you would have needed to do that um, in a step previous to this one. All right, let's do the fun job of stuffing the pillow into the pillowcase. If you, if you got your measurements right, this shouldn't be easy, but this shouldn't be difficult either. It should kind of wiggle its way in. look like a million bucks is to get the corner of the pillow all the way up into the corner of the pillow case. Floppy pillowcase corners are my biggest pet peeve. Don't let me come over to your house and see your floppy pillowcase corners. No, I'm kidding. But you need to do it on the bottom side too. And just get that filling all the way to the edge, all the way to the corner. This one's pretty good. And then tuck everything in nice and neat. Give it a, a little zhuzh. Oh my gosh, you guys. And there you have it, a gorgeous pillow that's reversible. Okay, I'm getting too excited. Let me show you what my little sofa situation looks like. 